Welcome to Saving Castles, the podcast for castle and chateau enthusiasts. Join us as we explore the fascinating history, stories and culture of these awe-inspiring structures, from the legends and folklore to the latest in restoration. We'll cover it all, so whether you're a seasoned castle aficionado or just discovering the magic of these magnificent buildings, this is the podcast for you. So grab your headphones and let's dive in. In the heart of 15th century England, a bloody conflict raged between two rival factions, tearing the nation apart and leaving a lasting legacy on its history, culture and landscape. This was the Wars of the Roses, a series of civil wars between the noble houses of Lancaster and York, both vying for the English crown. This epic struggle for power and authority would span three decades, from 1455 to 1487, and castles, those mighty bastions of medieval warfare, would play a pivotal role in the outcome of the conflict. In this episode of Saving Castles podcast, we will delve deep into the turbulent world of 15th century England, exploring the strategic importance of castles in the Wars of the Roses. We will journey through time and space, visiting some of the most significant castles of the era and discovering how they shaped the course of the wars and the future of the English monarchy. So... Sit back, relax, and join us as we embark on a captivating journey through a land divided by war, where kings and queens fought for their very survival and castles held the key to ultimate victory. The Wars of the Roses were a complex and often chaotic series of conflicts, but at their core they were a struggle between two rival dynasties, the House of Lancaster and the House of York. The Lancastrians were represented by the Red Rose, while the Yorkists bore the White Rose, giving the wards their famous name. Both houses were branches of the Plantagenet family, and both had legitimate claims to the English throne. The Lancastrians, led by the weak and mentally unstable King Henry VI, were the ruling house at the start of the wars. Beset by political intrigue and infighting, the Lancastrians were unable to maintain a stable government, and this opened the door for the ambitious House of York to stake their own claim to the throne. The Yorkists were led by Richard, Duke of York, and later his charismatic and ruthless son, Edward IV. These key players would shape the course of the Wars of the Roses, with each faction using castles as strategic strongholds to assert their dominance over the English landscape. The geography of England during the Wars of the Roses was a patchwork of competing territories, each controlled by powerful noble families loyal to either the Lancastrians or the Yorkists. To maintain control over these territories and ensure the loyalty of their subjects, both sides needed to secure key strategic locations and castles were the perfect solution. Positioned at the heart of these territories, castles served as military strongholds, administrative centers and symbols of power and authority. As the wars raged on, Control of these strategic locations would prove vital to the success of both the Lancastrians and the Yorkists. Castles were not only vital for maintaining control over contested regions, but they also provided vital support for military campaigns, as well as secure bases for plotting and planning future moves. Throughout the course of the Wars of the Roses, castles would change hands multiple times as each faction sought to gain the upper hand in this deadly game of thrones. Nestled along the banks of a river called Avon stands one of the most iconic castles of the Wars of the Roses, Warwick Castle. Boasting an imposing stone keep, high curtain walls, and a strategic position overlooking the surrounding countryside, Warwick Castle was a formidable stronghold that played a crucial role in the Yorkist cause. The castle was the power base of Richard Neville, the Earl of Warwick, who would come to be known as the Kingmaker for his significant influence during the Wars of the Roses. 
Richard Neville was a pivotal figure in the conflict, initially supporting the Yorkist cause and playing a key role in securing the throne for Edward IV. As the owner of Warwick Castle, Neville was able to use the fortress as a base for his military operations, gathering troops, planning campaigns, and hosting meetings with fellow Yorkist nobles. The castle's strategic location in the heart of England also made it an essential stronghold for controlling the Midlands and ensuring the loyalty of the surrounding territories. However, the Earl of Warwick's allegiance would not remain constant. Due to a falling out with Edward IV, Neville would later switch sides, supporting the Lancastrian cause and playing a significant role in the temporary restoration of Henry VI to the throne. Warwick Castle would once again serve as a crucial base for his operations, this time for the Lancastrian cause. Tragically for Neville, his attempts to place Henry back on the throne would ultimately lead to his own downfall, as he was killed at the Battle of Barnet in 1471. Deep in the heart of Yorkshire, Pontefract Castle stood as a symbol of Lancastrian power and resistance during the Wars of the Roses. With its massive stone keep, extensive curtain walls, and commanding views of the surrounding countryside, Pontefract Castle was a formidable fortress that played a vital role in the Lancastrian cause. As one of the key strongholds of the House of Lancaster, Pontefract Castle was more than just a military fortress. It also served as a prison for captured Yorkist nobles and an administrative centre for Lancastrian rule in the north of England. The castle's strategic location near the border with the Yorkist-controlled Midlands made it a crucial base for Lancastrian military operations, as well as a vital defensive bulwark against the Yorkist incursion. Throughout the Wars of the Roses, Pontefract Castle would change hands several times, reflecting the ebb and flow of the conflict. The castle would witness sieges, skirmishes, and even a royal murder, as Richard II, the deposed Lancastrian king, met his grisly end within its walls in 1400. Ultimately, the fall of Pontefract Castle to the Yorkist forces in 1461 would mark a turning point in the Wars of the Roses as the Lancastrian cause began to crumble and the tide turned in favour of the House of York. In the heart of the English capital lies a castle that has stood as a symbol of royal power and authority for centuries, the Tower of London. Originally built by William the Conqueror in the 11th century, the Tower has served as a royal palace, treasury, and prison throughout its long and storied history. During the Wars of the Roses, the Tower of London would take on an even greater significance, as both the Lancastrians and the Yorkists fought to gain control of this iconic fortress. As the seat of royal power, the Tower of London was more than just a castle. It was a symbol of the English monarchy itself. Possession of the tower not only granted its owner control over the capital, but it also sent a powerful message to the rest of the kingdom. Whoever controlled the tower was the true ruler of England. This made the tower a prize worth fighting for, and throughout the Wars of the Roses, both the Lancastrians and the Yorkists would wage bitter battles to seize control of this ancient fortress. The Tower of London would play a central role in many key moments of the Wars of the Roses. It was here that the Lancastrian king, Henry VI, was imprisoned by the victorious Yorkists after the Battle of Northampton in 1460. The Tower also served as the setting for the infamous princes in the Tower Mystery, in which the young Yorkist king Edward V and his brother Richard, Duke of York, were imprisoned and later disappeared, paving the way for their uncle, Richard III, to seize the throne. As the Wars of the Roses raged on, the Tower of London would change hands multiple times, its ownership reflecting the shifting balance of power between the Lancastrians and the Yorkists. Ultimately, it was the Tower's symbolic importance that made it such a vital prize during the conflict, as both sides fought to control the very heart of the English monarchy. 
nestled on a high ridge overlooking the picturesque market town of Ludlow in Shropshire. Ludlow Castle stands as a testament to the strategic importance of castles during the Wars of the Roses. This impressive fortress, with its soaring towers and imposing walls, played a pivotal role in the Yorkist cause, serving as a key stronghold and base for military operation. Ludlow Castle's strategic location on the border of the Welsh marches made it an essential stronghold for controlling the surrounding territories and maintaining the loyalty of local nobles. The castle also served as the headquarters for the powerful council of the marches, an administrative body responsible for governing the borderlands between England and Wales. During the Wars of the Roses, Ludlow Castle was firmly in the hands of the Yorkist faction. In 1459, the castle was the site of a significant Yorkist gathering as Richard, Duke of York, and his allies met to discuss their strategy for reclaiming the English throne. Later, Ludlow Castle would serve as the home of the young Yorkist king, Edward V, before his fateful journey to the Tower of London. The fortunes of Ludlow Castle would ebb and flow along with the tides of the Wars of the Roses, but its importance as a strategic stronghold and symbol of Yorkist authority would remain undiminished. Today, the imposing ruins of Ludlow Castle continue to stand as a reminder of the vital role that castles played in the struggle for power during this tumultuous period in English history. Perched on a rocky outcrop overlooking the windswept coast of Northumberland, Bamborough Castle has long been a symbol of strength and defiance. With its imposing walls, soaring towers and commanding views of the surrounding countryside and coastline, this castle was a formidable fortress that played a significant role in the Wars of the Roses. In 1464, Bamborough Castle would become the focal point of a dramatic siege that would demonstrate the effectiveness of castles in medieval warfare. The castle was held by Lancastrian forces led by Sir Ralph Grey, who had betrayed the Yorkist cause and seized Bamborough in the name of the deposed King Henry VI. In response, the Yorkist King, Edward IV, dispatched a force led by Richard Neville, Earl of Warwick, to retake the castle. The siege of Bamborough Castle would prove to be a gruelling and bloody affair, as the Yorkists sought to breach the castle's formidable defences. For weeks, the two sides engaged in a deadly game of cat and mouse, with the Yorkists launching a series of attacks on the castle walls, while the Lancastrians fought tenaciously to repel the invaders. Ultimately, the siege would come to a dramatic climax when the Yorkists employed a new and devastating weapon, the cannon. The relentless bombardment of the castle walls by the Yorkist artillery proved too much for the Lancastrians, and Bamberg Castle finally fell to the besieging forces. The siege of Bamborough Castle would serve as a defining moment in the Wars of the Roses, demonstrating the evolving nature of medieval warfare and the critical role of castles in determining the outcome of the conflict. Throughout the Wars of the Roses, castles served not only as military strongholds and strategic assets, but also as symbols of power, authority and legitimacy. The possession of a castle was a visible sign of a noble's wealth and influence, and the ability to control these mighty fortresses could make or break a ruler's claim to the throne. During the Wars of the Roses, both the Lancastrians and the Yorkists sought to bolster their claims to the English crown by constructing and expanding their castles, turning them into opulent palaces that showcased their wealth and power. Castles such as Warwick, Pontefract, and Ludlow were lavishly decorated and furnished, their imposing architecture serving as a testament to the ambition and authority of their owners. In addition to their roles as symbols of power, castles also played an essential role in local governance and administration during the Wars of the Roses. Many castles served as the headquarters for regional councils and courts, providing a centralised location for the administration of justice, the collection of taxes, and the enforcement of royal authority. In this way, 
Castles were not only the physical embodiment of power, but also the very heart of political and social life during the tumultuous years of the Wars of the Roses. As the wars raged on, the art of war continued to evolve, and castles were forced to adapt to the changing nature of medieval warfare. Innovations in weaponry and technology, such as the introduction of gunpowder and the cannon, led to the development of new strategies and tactics for both attacking and defending castles. In response to these new threats, castle designers and engineers were forced to innovate, creating new types of fortifications and defences that could withstand the devastating power of gunpowder weaponry. Star-shaped bastions, angled walls, and deep moats were all employed to protect castles from the destructive force of artillery, while improved gatehouses and drawbridges helped to thwart would-be attackers and keep the castle's inhabitants safe from harm. As the importance of gunpowder weapons grew, so too did the role of artillery in castle sieges. Both the Lancastrians and the Yorkists invested heavily in cannons and other siege weapons, recognizing their potential to break through even the most formidable of defenses. As seen in the siege of Bamber Castle, the strategic use of artillery could turn the tide of a battle and determine the outcome of the conflict. Despite these innovations and adaptations, the Wars of the Roses would ultimately signal the beginning of the end for the traditional medieval castle. The rise of gunpowder weapons and the changing nature of warfare would lead to the decline of the castle as a military stronghold as new types of fortifications, such as bastions and star forts, began to take their place. Without the castles of medieval England, the Wars of the Roses might have unfolded very differently and the fate of the English monarchy could have been forever changed. As the Wars of the Roses reached its dramatic conclusion, one final battle would determine the fate of the English crown and bring an end to the decades-long conflict. The Battle of Bosworth Field, fought on August 22, 1485, would see the forces of the last Yorkist king, Richard III, face off against the Lancastrian challenger Henry Tudor. While castles played a significant role throughout the Wars of the Roses, their importance during the lead-up to the Battle of Bosworth Field cannot be overstated. Richard III, the embattled Yorkist king, used the formidable castle at Nottingham as his base of operations during the final days before the battle. The castle's strategic location in the heart of England made it an ideal location for gathering his forces and planning his campaign against the invading Lancastrian army. Meanwhile, Henry Tudor, the Lancastrian claimant to the throne, relied heavily on the support of the nobles who controlled key castles throughout the kingdom. The castles of Wales and the West Country played a crucial role in Henry's campaign, providing him with much-needed reinforcements, supplies, and safe havens as he made his way across England to confront Richard. As the two armies met on the field of battle at Bosworth, the castles that had played such a vital role in the Wars of the Roses would once again prove their strategic importance. Richard, aware of the significance of the nearby castles, dispatched troops to secure them and prevent them from falling into Lancastrian hands. However, as the battle raged on, it would be the loyalty of the castle-owning nobles, rather than the fortresses themselves, that would ultimately decide the outcome of the conflict. In a dramatic turn of events, several key Yorkist nobles, including the powerful Stanley family, who controlled several castles in the region, would betray Richard and switch their allegiance to Henry Tudor. With the tide of the battle turning against him, Richard would make a desperate charge to try and kill Henry Tudor and end the conflict once and for all. Tragically, for the Yorkist king, his gamble would fail, and he would be cut down on the battlefield, his body later taken to the nearby town of Leicester for public display. The Battle of Bosworth Field marked the end of the Wars of the Roses and the beginning of the Tudor dynasty. With the death of Richard and the ascension of Henry the Seventh to the throne, the long and bitter conflict between the houses of Lancaster and York finally came to a close. 
Though the castles that had played such a pivotal role in the struggle would continue to serve as symbols of power and authority, their strategic importance would gradually decline as the age of the medieval castle came to an end. As the dust settled on the Wars of the Roses and the Tudor dynasty took hold of the English crown, the castles that had played such a pivotal role in the conflict began to fade into the background of history. However, their impact on the course of the Wars of the Roses and their role in shaping the history of England cannot be overstated. The castles served as symbols of power and legitimacy, as well as vital military strongholds and centres of administration. They played a critical role in the strategies and tactics employed by both the Lancastrians and the Yorkists, providing essential support and resources to their respective causes. The shifting control of these castles often determined the balance of power in the conflict, and their possession could make or break a king's claim to the throne. In the years that followed, the Wars of the Roses, many of the castles that had played such a crucial role in the conflict began to fall into disrepair, or were transformed into grand palaces and stately homes. However, the legacy of the castles of the Wars of the Roses endures to this day. These mighty fortresses, with their imposing walls, soaring towers, and fascinating histories, continue to captivate the imagination and inspire awe in those who visit them. As we explore the ruins of Warwick Castle, the stark beauty of Bamborough, or the imposing presence of the Tower of London, we are reminded of the vital role that these castles played in shaping the course of English history and the lives of those who fought and lived within their walls. As we conclude our exploration of the strategic role of castles in the Wars of the Roses, we are left with a profound appreciation for the lasting impact that these fortresses had on the course of history. These castles bore witness to some of the most pivotal moments of the conflict, from the deposition of kings to the rise of new dynasties. By preserving and celebrating these magnificent structures, we ensure that the stories of the people who lived, fought and died within their walls will continue to be told for generations to come. We hope you have been both entertained and enlightened by the tales of these magnificent structures and the roles they played in shaping the destiny of England. We hope you enjoyed this episode of the Saving Castles podcast. Stay tuned for our next episode where we'll continue to explore the fascinating world of castles and chateaus. Don't miss out and subscribe to our podcast to get notified when new episodes are released. For more information about us and our work, visit savingcastles.com. Thank you for listening.